I guess you could say I'm the minister in the family, or uh, at least trying to be a minister. I'm currently in youth ministry, I say. They don't, definitely don't teach you about funerals or speaking eulogies. But regardless, it is an honor. An honor to share my simple thoughts of someone who has known me my entire life. Yet I've only been around for the last 21 years of her life. Only a fraction of what many of you here have been able to share with her. It is difficult to put into words how much my grandmother meant to me. I will begin by saying what this eulogy will not be. I will not talk in metaphors about how my grandma has her wings and is now looking down on us smiling. She is definitely in a better place, a paradise. This is for two reasons. The first is that I believe these metaphors often catch us and make us forget the power and hope we have in Christ's resurrection. Rather than basing our hope in biblical foundations, we loosely put our hope in cultural metaphors that won't last. I am not belittling the notion that my grandma is in another place, a great place, a perfect place, but I do not think this is the time for cheesy metaphors. Secondly, I honestly believe my grandma would have found sitting on a cloud quite boring, unless, of course, she was the one to be able to throw the lightning bolts at people. <laughs> <laughs> that she might love. But, but she is definitely in a, in a better place. A paradise without pain and suffering. Additionally, I will not be sugarcoating my grandma's life. I will not compare her to Mother Teresa or uphold her as a saint. Now, I know some of you are currently swimming in your seat, scared of what horrific things I might say or have already said. Or you might be wondering who allowed me to speak, <laughs> thinking I am completely unorthodox and non-traditional. Let me tell you what I will do. I will be honest, I will be realistic, because that's who my grandmother was. She was a strong-willed and intelligent woman. To tell you the truth, I had a hard time putting all my good, uh, my granny's good traits into writing. No matter how hard I tried, I could never do justice to what she overcame in her lifetime. I know we are all grieving today, but... <laughs> We've all lost a great lady, and I know where she is now, and she's hanging out with Jesus. Today, I would like to share with you a few of my own personal memories and some of my personal reflections about who she was. If I had a son of my grandma, I can guess I can break it down into three things. Number one, loving. Number two, caring. And number three, hilarious. <laughs> Freaking hilarious. <laughs> While we won't deny grandma's Chicken noodle soup being the best in the world, our grandma was so much more to us than her great cooking. Did you know that she was funny? And I mean really funny. <laughs> Old miss her sense of humor, and her wind would often catch us by surprise. Make us laugh and leave us smiling long after the conversation has ended. On countless occasions, our spirits were lifted by her sense of humor, and we felt pride from having such a funny grandmother. I could spend the rest of my lifetime telling you all the things I loved about her, but I'll try, try to make this as uh, short as possible. I really don't know if I can do my grandma justice with my view of her, but I'm going to try. This is the last gift that I can give to her, my caring words and the knowledge that I try my best to express how wonderful she was. She was so many things to so many people. She left a legacy and instilled her values in her children and her grandchildren. Well, I don't know about Brent, but you work. <laughs> work in progress. Work in progress. <laughs> I, I wish I knew what Grandma would say to get us through the grief we are feeling right now. Maybe like one of her one-liners, like, shut the hell up or I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure she would appreciate all the beautiful music, the flower arrangements, and especially seeing her in her cute little pink outfit. I mean, she looked beautiful yesterday if you didn't get the chance to see her. But she would also feel a little bit embarrassed that we're, all the attention is centered on her. But Grandma, you're going to have to deal with it for a few more minutes, okay? Well, my, my Grandma would always take me to funerals, so it's kind of ironic now I'm speaking at hers. I feel blessed that I had so many opportunities to talk with my Grandma before she passed. But there are still things that I wish I had the chance to say. For, lo for those of you that don't know, two, uh, two months ago we received the news that my Grandma was diagnosed with bladder cancer. I knew the time was short, so I put my two weeks notice in at work so that I could spend more time with her and put my future plans on going to Bible college on hold. I remember telling my mom and she immediately started, started to cry and said, oh, how sweet of you. But I thought Grandma would always think of others before herself. She never wanted us to be sad and would do anything to cheer us up. Even in the hospital, she used her jokes and humor to get us smiling and laughing. For example, the time my friends and I, Bridget and Miguel, they were with me, we were in the hospital we were trying to feed her peaches. 
And her side comments had us all laughing as she refused to eat the peaches. And you didn't know my grandma, she was kind of stubborn when you tried to feed her food. But with me, she, would, she, she sometimes ate the food when I fed her. But anyways, I was willing to be her caretaker because I thought to myself, well, she wiped my butt growing up, so why not return the favor? <laughs> Even now, I'm brought back to the memories as a young boy when I would wet the bed and sneak downstairs to cuddle with her, or the story of the, the, the day when she decided to try to give me lemons for the first time. After she saw my face pucker up, Grandma could not stop laughing as she was making fun of me as I was making the face of, ooh, that was so sour. But I realized that these sour moments we are given in life Moments where we really have no say in, we have to bitterly accept. But one thing is for sure, as the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But on a positive note, I remember now something funny that recently happened quite often, like, anytime Grandma was missing some or something or she needed something, she would yell through the house, Brandon! She'd yell multiple times to try to get, try to get a hold of me. <laughs> and it was either two things that she was missing. It was either her glasses, or the remote control for the TV. <laughs> but I'll never forget the, the recent time when I walked into her, in her room and she said, Brandon, I'm missing something. I said, Grandma, what is it? She goes, that darn dog took my teeth. <laughs> and I said, Bear got a hold of her teeth. And sure enough, as I looked under the bed, there he was growling at me. <laughs> As he was chewing, a, like, he, like he was chewing a bone. I'm like, oh man, you little, little rat. I said, get out of here. And I, he, put the, he put the teeth right in my hand. Luckily, there was only one tooth missing. <laughs> and the rest were in perfect shape. And, and I actually wanted Bear and Soldier to be here because those are the two, two closest things I were to her. And she would, she would love to have them here, but they'll be here for the luncheon, all right? <laughs> so. Anyways, my grandma was an avid reader. She loved reading, and she loved watching her television. Some of her favorite shows were Dr. Phil, 60 Minutes, Dancing with the Stars, and Jeopardy. And especially, I remember the time when she called me into her room and she said, Brandon, Brandon, you're on TV. I said, I'm on TV? She walks in, she goes, I'm watching Judge Judy. I said, oh, hey, and then we watched the whole episode together. We had a good time, some good laughs. Brought me back to my freshman year in high school when I went to Judge Judy. But anyways, besides that, for all those who are listening today, if you can get one thing out of what I'm saying today, never let life go by without letting those you care for know that you love them. It's crucial because if you don't, you're gonna regret it in the end. Before I left for Florida a few weeks ago, I got to visit my grandma, and I remember the last three words that I got to say to her were, I love you. Those three simple words, I got to say I love you to her. So while I was in Florida on, Thursday, on uh, Wednesday, uh, I was in service and I got the text from my dad saying, Grandma went to heaven two minutes ago. And then I got a text from Aunt Kathy saying, how is your grandmother? I immediately started to break down and, and I started crying and, and I was like, well, I need to get out of the service. So I walk out of the service and I call my parents and I, and I got the news and I got to actually pray for my grandma. I got to pray for my, my mom and, and I just felt this peace come over me and I didn't have any tears or anything because I knew that she was in heaven. So, although she never got the chance, I think in her own way, she was able to show us how important we are all to her. We may no longer see her, but we'll always have these special moments we had, we had to share with her. Let's just be thankful that we knew a special lady like my grandmother. Although we may not have been ready, it was Connie's time to go, though. God needed her there. And while she will be forever missed, she will never be forgotten. Her kind words and gestures will remain in our hearts and our memories. Her love and quality time with her family will continue to be passed on for generations to come. In this way, my grandma will live forever, through our memories, through our tra the traditions that she made, and through our love for one another. She was a mother, a sister, and a friend to all of us. I'm sure each and every one of you here today has something to share on how my grandmother touched your life. She shared a lot of good memories, especially with me, her favorite grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, she... <laughs> we shared lots of things together, and she was one of my best friends. Thank you for all coming today to show your love and support for my family and to show your respect to Connie. She was an amazing woman and will be missed by all of us. And to finish, I mean, she lived a solid 89 years here on planet Earth. We can thank her for all the fun and laughs that we have had with her for the last years. It's because of her that so many of us can find a joke in the worst of situations. We owe her for making life a much more pleasant experience. I love you, Grandma. 
Well, I'm going to go off the script from the eulogy, and I want to talk about how I actually had the opportunity to witness to my grandma. I got saved two years ago, and I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I grew up in the church, and uh, I never knew God. And I gave my life to him, and I've been sober ever since, and I'm not perfect. I'm a far perfect Christian, but one thing I got to do was witness to my grandma. And I remember when I first got saved, I cried, and I said, God, save my grandma. And then I had the opportunity to share my faith with her. I got to share the gospel with her. I got to share the good news, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This life is temporary. It's so short. She lived 89, 89 years. But guess what? Now she's in a better place. She's in heaven. And I got to sit down with her and minister the love of God to her, that God loves you. He has a plan for your life. John 3, 16, my dad always told me, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Some of you in here today, you guys might be struggling or grieving, whatever it is. Some of you guys might be having unforgiveness in your heart. Some of you guys might have resentment that you need to forgive someone. Well, I tell you today, you have the opportunity to do that right now. And I just want to say a prayer for everyone. If you guys can just bow your heads and put your hand on your heart. So, Father God, I thank you so much for every person that came out on this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we are just so happy that we get to come to this church. And my grandma considered this her second home. And I just thank you, Jesus, for, for the life that Connie lived. She left a legacy behind. Her humor is in me, and I just pray that you could just, I could be more funnier, funnier person because of her. But I'm never going to match to her humor. But Father God, I just pray right now that your love will cover the hearts of every person gathered here today. And Lord, I just pray that they can open their hearts to receive you as their Lord and Savior. And if anyone, if everyone just repeat this prayer for me. Say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins. I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his blood for me at the cross at Calvary. I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in your holy word, in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess our mouths to the Lord that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus Christ, Lord over my soul. This very moment, Jesus Christ is my Savior. I am saved. I am born again. Jesus transformed my life so I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not to myself. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and giving me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. As the minister of the gospel, I can say that if you fully open your heart to, to that prayer, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, one day when you die, because there's statistics that 10 out of 10 people die, so I don't care how old you are, you're going to die. And you're going to go somewhere. You're either going to go to hell or you're going to go to heaven. That's, that's two places. If you don't believe in the afterlife, that's your, that, I'm telling you, you're, you're going to go before the, the, the judgment seat of Christ. But I'm telling you, this lady right here, I got to minister. She's accepted Jesus Christ from in your heart. I don't have to grieve. I, I celebrate the life because she loved life. This lady was filled with joy. Every time you saw her, she was always had she always had a smile on her face. And every and I, I was blessed to live in the house. I never got to leave, so I never got to leave her. And I'm, I'm I know I'm gonna see her again one day. And I can only imagine the day that I get to see my grandmother. How we're gonna be dancing in heaven. Hanging out with Jesus, having a good old time. It's going to be the best time ever, and you guys are going to be there too. I can only imagine what that day is going to be like when I get to see her again. Love you guys. Thank you for coming out.